Do not use gasoline. All right, so we're firing up the outdoor burner, and uh, I always like to start my fires on top. It's less smoke that way if you start the fire on top and let it burn down in. So here goes. <clears throat> Now this used to be a WD-40 bottle, but now it is a K1 kerosene bottle. Do not use gasoline like this. So interestingly, we have our new draft control implemented and the furnace automatically detected the fire and opened the draft and it will automatically close it again once it detects the fire is out. Okay, we'll let that take off and we'll come back in a few minutes. <clears throat> Okay, we'll point this up at the stack so you can see the smoke, of which there is very little. And that is just after starting. So a lot of people will complain that their outdoor wood boiler smokes. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Very few of which, or possibly none of which, have to do with the design of the boiler. Or even whether or not you use the damper or any of that stuff. What it has to do with is um, trying to burn green wood, number one. It's supposed to be a selling point of outdoor wood boilers, but I don't get it. I totally don't understand that um as a selling point why would you burn green wood you're wasting energy turning water into steam in the wood before it can even heat the water so anyway i'll stop ranting about that right now uh yeah and the other thing is how do they start the fire do they start a small fire on top of the main charge or do they start it underneath if you start your kindling underneath your fire it's got to basically smoke up through all of that initial charge and try to um, get it lit whereas the top lighting method makes much less smoke so 
I've been talking for maybe a minute. Let's look up at the stack again. No smoke. All you can see is heat waves. I don't know if you can see that in the camera view or not. So let's take a closer look at uh, the controller, which is right there toward the top of the shot, a little weatherproof case that contains an Arduino, a relay, and some power supplies and some other bits and pieces to make everything work. So I'll see if I can get you off the tripod and go over there. <clears throat> All right, so it says that the water tank one is 121, tank two is 117, the fire is at 570 Fahrenheit. And that's measured in the side at the top of the firebox at the side away from the flue. And it says raft. I need to fix that in the Arduino code. That starts out saying draft. But it's a draft status. And right now, the Arduino is calling for the draft to be open. And it is in fire increase mode. That means make the fire hotter because we need heat in the tanks. And when the tanks hit 160, that will switch to fire decrease and the draft will close. Uh, but that won't be for an hour or two, possibly. Uh, once again, there's the chimney. Very little smoke. Nothing. There's not really any smoke. Uh, now because I'm against the bright sky, maybe you just can't see it, so we'll move over here. There's my fuel supply right there. <clears throat> so against the dark backdrop of the trees, you still can't really see any smoke. So, that's a lesson in building smokeless fires, as well as a demonstration of my brand new home-built outdoor wood boiler using 270 gallon oil tanks. Let's take a look at the fire now. Oops. Have to catch those and throw them back in. See how it's burning down into the pile real nice? That'll keep right on going. Here's another thing to see about the outdoor wood burner is I have a web interface running on the Arduino using an Ethernet shield and this tells me it refreshes every 10 seconds or so. And uh, it tells me what the water temperature is in the two tanks. And you'll notice that there that the tanks actually do not stay perfectly balanced. Um, one is a few degrees hotter than the other. And I am still sorting out why that is. The flow rates between the two tanks are the same. But anyway, all right, so here we are at my workstation where I do programming for a living. And the fire status after about, oh, 45 minutes, we have 136 and 130, fire temp 311, draft is still calling for fire. Is 
is just about dark and we will check on the water temperature. I now have a handle and a latch on the outer door and we have a better display that says two tank wood burner tank one 159 tank two 152 fire nothing draft holding heat Just a cheap character display I got on eBay. It's nicely lit blue. Here we are inside my garage at the 40 gallon and it is still all hooked up and we are not operating it. There's no fire. And along the side here we have inside of these insulated pipes is what I call a sidearm heat exchanger and it is three quarter inch pipe with a half inch pipe going down inside of it and then the two pipes from the outdoor boiler go up and out and this red pipe here is just an overflow pipe that is connected to the safety valve on the um, 40 gallon. So up here we have insulated pipes that go into the 40 gallon at the top. Here we have a pipe going to a pump. which circulates the sidearm heat exchanger. Some people use convection only, and that did work, but it works even better if you have a pump. And then over here, buried behind my stuff, is the pipes and the ethernet cable that goes out to the Arduino. That comes up to a pump. And then that goes up across the ceiling over to the sidearm on the 40 gallon. These pipes go down and out to the outdoor boiler. And it's a Monday morning. The wife is doing the laundry. I have the fire going, but it's difficult to tell because there's no smoke. And we have 180 and 170, the fire is at 298 Fahrenheit. That is by a thermal couple sensor, which is inside of here. It's just ordinary 30 millivolt thermal couple. Goes over here, goes through the top stoking door and into the firebox and that is not a very hot part of the firebox so its readings tend to not be very hot. Imagine if I measured it at the flue it would be much hotter. And we have handles now. And these are just welded up out of rebar and bits of uni strut. When I say uni strut in that context, I'm referring to these angled brackets that are made by the same company 
and that are meant to fasten to the strut itself. And those work super good. There is just a simple spring to put a little tension on it. And here is part of my wood supply. This amount of pallet boards will last probably a day and a half, roughly. And that's maybe equivalent to, I don't know, three or four pallets. And I have my pallet hauling rig right here. Very simple, cheap utility trailer. And that's what I use to pull it. And that is just from a small local run I did. Usually I gather more pallets than that at a time, but that's what they had. And that probably represents, I don't know, a week. Maybe four days, five days of heating. And so far we are just heating the water. We are not heating the house yet. It is spring of 2021. And I probably will not put in the heat exchanger in the house until sometime this summer when it's easy to trench lines into the ground. <laughs> 